Hi, welcome to another video in the Content Manager 10 Overview Series by Information First. In this video, we're going to look at the desktop client and some of the changes that have made to improve the user experience. And we know we're all about the user experience because as any, the secret to any project is user acceptance. And if we can show users how to enjoy the system, how to make it their own, how to customize it, it's going to help lead to a more successful project. With that being said, let's look it up. Let's open up the new content manager. So right off the top, you can see the icons haven't changed too much. Although for those uh, crafty or, or sharp-eyed uh, people you might notice I have a CM admin shortcut we'll talk about that in another video for now I'm just going to double click on my content manager uh, web my content manager desktop icon and we open up so first off it opens with the traditional tip of the day um, this is still there still a customizable file and that hasn't changed but I do like to, to show it uh, on my videos so I'm just going to turn it off so it doesn't come on again and I'll close that uh, first thing to note, uh, basic overview changes haven't been that significant, but there are a lot of improvements behind the scenes. So from the top, let's look at one of the first improvements here. If I select the drop down, uh, this menu has changed a little bit. First thing you'll notice is that the global get global options is now exposed front and center. So no longer do we have to go into the user options to access it. We can just get global right from this drop down menu. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is the open data set. So this dialogue has changed a little bit. Um, the new browse. So basically, if the user has all the details, server name, ID, they can go ahead and click the new button and then just populate that information. Um, if they want to look for more, then you can go to the traditional browse, which will prompt you to kind of like a guided wizard and adding a new data set puts in your server uh, and then it will list the available data sets. So other than that, properties default remove and proxy are all the same with the option to open the default next time. So we'll leave that one alone. We'll leave that one alone. The only thing that changes is the new slash browse button. The next thing I want to draw your attention to is the user options dialogue has changed a little bit. So if I go drop down options uh, here, we can see the new one. Uh, let me just move it into focus so we can see it a little clear. Here's the new layout. So we have the the, uh, the navigational panel on the left now. We're sl slowly evolving away from the tabbed view. Some of the, uh, f I think, things like uh, locations, workflows, actions still had that traditional tab view in 9.4 with 10. Most of the tab view is gone and we have the navigational pane. Uh, you'll notice a couple of new options here. Uh, the first and foremost here that I really like is record type selection. So what this allows your users to do is put the most popular, not most popular, the most used record type for them at the top of the list. So here I have uh, my two standard folder and basic document. These are ones that I create a lot. Let me just cancel here for a second. And if I was to create a new record, you can see this demonstration database I have created has a lot of different record types. So let's say that I'm in an organization with a lot of record types and I work in one department and all I really do every day is create maintenance folders. So I can take, uh, I'm going to find my maintenance folder so I don't have to scroll through this list every time I create a maintenance folder. What I'm going to do from my user options is go into the record type tab and I'm going to add maintenance folder because that's one I create a lot. I just got to put a check mark there and just for fun, let me also bring in my expense report because I do a lot of those ones as well. So I'm adding these are my top four record types that I create on a regular basis and I want content manager to display them to me first. So I'm going to put a check mark in there, click OK. Now when I am in a user and I click new record you can see i got my maintenance folder my expense report my standard folder at the top and then the rest of the record types so this kind of overrides what we traditionally would have used the sort order for to kind of control the order that our users would have experienced new record types here we're giving the power to the end user and they can put the record types in the order that they prefer so i think this is a great improvement again it's all about that user adoption and making the system yours um I found something else when I was looking around in here. When I go back into the user options under the search results, I saw these new custom order for records within a classification, custom order for when records within a container. And it looks like you can then go in and override some of the default sort orders for how you work. So again, if you like your records with the most recent on top, you can seems to be that you can do some sort of uh, configuration changes to make that happen. So that, that's a pretty handy feature in the background. Uh, I like that one. Um, there's also a new Outlook integration 
uh, tab here, which allows you to default your check-in styles uh, for email messages and sent mail items. So again, all about usability. If, if you're doing things or the same things a lot, any opportunity to set defaults on those things certainly makes the user experience much better. Uh, and more enriched if we want to, if we want to go that far. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do a whole separate video on, but the other thing I'm going to kind of tease it a little bit in this video, um, the Explorer view. So they're really emphasizing the Explorer view and the Explorer view is expanded. You can do a lot more with it. Uh, the video will go into more detail. I almost think I'm going to put this out there to the, to the trim community. Uh, I almost think that the Explorer view could replace the shortcut panel. So what I mean by that is uh, I'm actually going to go to my view tab. I'm going to turn off shortcuts and then I'm going to go to my user options tab where I just was. And I'm going to go to my startup screen and I'm going to select the Explorer view, which is down here somewhere. Now, every time I open a content manager, what's going to happen is it's going to go to this Explorer view, which I really like. And the reason why I like it, you'll notice it has favorites, it has trays, it has user labels, it has classifications, and they're all um, exposed. And it's a little bit like the shortcut bar, but more. And that's why I, I kind of like it. Um, if I click on my favorite records, I get that. If I click on my favorite schedules, I get that. I don't have any favorite schedules. So maybe I should pick something that has something. Classifications? Locations? Yeah, there. Oh, I got to expand it. That's my bad. Uh, so there, uh, it's showing you records. So that's kind of how the Explorer view works. Uh, I made it my startup page. So every time I open the program, this is what will come. And just to contrast that with the shortcut bar, what we're looking at is it has the same thing. It has my records. It has my locations. Then I have to select the tray button and then I have to select the recent button. Whereas the shortcut bar kind of gives that all to us on the, uh, let me just close that. Let me close down my shortcuts, go back to my home tab and hit the explore where this kind of gives you everything the shortcut bar does and more. So I do kind of recommend maybe turning off the shortcut bar, turning on the explorer, forcing your users to use the explore bar. Why? Because it syncs with the web client and that's going to be a whole video. The, the web client will be another video in this series as well as the explore bar. So, so tune into those ones. Uh, I'm trying to make these videos smaller and more bite sized so we can get the information we need quicker and you're not listening to me ramble on for 20 or 30 minutes. So with that, I'm going to move on uh, to some of the other changes with respect to the user. The big here thing here is the big one I really like too now is and uh, they're calling them shortcuts. I'm going to call them macros. So I, I mean, I'm not saying they're macros. They are macros. <laughs> what am I trying to say? I, I like to think of the shortcut option that they've created as your ability to assign macros. So a macro typically in Excel or in, in, in another tool is just a whole bunch of instructions or clicks that you do on a regular basis and you save it as a macro. Shortcut bar kind of does that. So let's assume that I open or I create a certain record type a lot. And more importantly, let's say I even uh, do a, a particular search all the time, or I create a, a document in a folder all the time. I can make shortcut commands or macros to run these for me. And then let me show you how that gets done. The first thing you're going to do is right click on the uh, toolbar, select the customize ribbon sh command shortcuts. And you see, I've already created two. So I have a words only. What that shortcut does is it opens up my words only search form. We'll talk about search forms in another video. I also have a basic document creation right here. I'm going to show you, I'm going to create a new one, which will put a document into a folder. So I'll show you that in two seconds. What I'm first going to do, because this is my new content manager training image, let's go ahead and create a training folder or a demo. So I'm going to create a standard folder. I'm going to call this content manager 10 demo stuff and I'm going to save it. I'm going to copy this record number. Okay. So now I have a folder uh, and I'm going to show you that as part of my shortcut bar. So number one, I'm going to right click again, go to commands. So now that I'm at the new shortcut dialog, what I'm going to do is do a new record in container. It's going to come up with the wizard. So let me go with my recent containers. I just created this one today. And sure enough, there's my content manager 10 demo stuff. So this is the container I want to put it in. I'm going to click OK. And would you like to set a preset record type for creating a record in this container? Yes, I would. So what it's basically, what I'm basically creating a macro for is a document to go in the same folder every time. So I'm going to say, yes, I would. 
And I'm always going to make this a standard uh, basic document edit and click OK. So I have now made a macro that will automatically create a basic document and throw it in my demonstration document container, which is really speeding things up. So that's the first part is managing your shortcuts. The second thing you want to do is kind of put it on to the search bar. So right now you can see across my ribbon, I have the standard ones. I'm going to create a ribbon or a tab specifically for my commands. So I'm going to right click up here again, go to customize the uh, ribbon. I'm going to select uh, new. So I'm going to come down here and do new tab. And first off, remember, uh, I think I have another video out there. You have to put something on here or else all your changes will be forgotten. So I'm going to rename this one to uh, my, my, my macros or my commands like that. Then I'm going to go and rename a group. So let's say I'm going to have search commands and I'm going to have record commands. So I'm going to make a group and I'm going to just rename this one. I'm going to call this one search. Oops, spell it correctly. I have to work around this big microphone, so it, I, I make a lot of typos. And I'm going to also add another group. And this other group will be um, called record stuff. So I'll do records like that. Okay, so I've created my new tab. I want to put it at the end so I can access it. So I'm going to move it down. So you see it's going after the administration. Now what I want to do is add my shortcut commands to it. I'm going to go to the left-hand side and select my um, ribbon command shortcuts. And here they all are. So basic document, I'm going to put in the record section. The uh, words only search form, I'm going to put in my search group. And then the new basic document in a container, I'm going to put in my records again. So now I have two commands and records to in searching. Click OK. I get my, my, my commands tab appears. Now what I can do if I want to create a record is click on my commands because I always put documents in my demo. I'm going to click on this and I'll say testing the command like that. You can see the container has been defaulted. Great. The time, date, everything. And then I just click OK. So that saves me a lot of steps. It saves me going new, record type, folder, or document, container. All about like five, six clicks have been saved by building a macro because I do this a lot. While I'm here, let me show you the search form. If I click the words only search form, that brings up the uh, customized search form, which is only words. So it gives me title word, notes word, etc. I'll show you that in another video. But just as a teaser, search forms are available in the um, in the manage tab search forms. And here are the company default search forms. Now why I am on search forms is another user change. So it's search forms now in versions 9.4 and below were only available on the web client, you would create them in the desktop full client. And then they would be available only in the web client. But They've now expanded that. If I was doing a search and I was doing search for records, you can see search forms is now available to me. So all those search forms you may have developed for your staff in the earlier versions for the web client are now available in Content Manager 10. So through the search forms, there they are. And again, I can access that words only search form that I've created. So again, I have other videos out there that talk about search forms, etc. That's just showing you now that with Content Manager 10, you can access search forms from the desktop client, which is huge because everybody likes search forms. Certainly make things a little bit easier. So we've looked at the commands. We've looked at the customizing the ribbon. We've looked at the search forms. Let me close off these windows and let me show you a few more changes around the user experience and the tab view. So for example, if I go to my Explorer view and I'm going to show you that if I were to pick a particular uh, record. Let me just kick off a search here. If I right click on this record and go to the properties view, you can see it's now got the tab view up. I'll just give you a little glimpse of history and we'll see that 9.4 uh, is flashing on the screen right now. So you can kind of see how that's changed a little bit. Uh, but these this tab view for record properties has also been applied to our locations. Uh, if I go to my favorite locations here and I right click on its properties, um, you can see it's got the new tab view as well. Let me move this up here. It's got the new view. I don't know why all the dinging is coming. I'm getting emails. Um, so there you can see that the that has changed. And finally, if I go to say a classification and go to its properties, it has been changed. Now you'll notice a couple of times I messed up. Properties looks like it's been moved from the bottom to the top. That's okay. Uh, it's just a little bit quicker access. So if I just right click and there's the properties right there as opposed to the very bottom. So uh, a few little changes around there. So, so far, so good. 
uh, really enjoying the new client. Uh, I, I'm excited about the other video. So be sure to check out the other video, which features the web client. Another video is going to feature the Explorer bar. Another video will feature some of the administrative changes. Uh, give you a little spoiler alert, custom icons. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and we'll take it from there. So thanks for tuning. There's a bunch more videos. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the little thumbs up button. And for more content manager content, please hit the subscribe button to be notified when a video is released. And more importantly, if you want me to do a video on something, please post it in the comments. If you can figure out who I am, send me an email. Uh, we'll try to get videos. It helps me come up with content and it gives me something to do. So appreciate you for, appreciate you for tuning in. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day.